So we are joined by the voice of basically sports at this point in uh, Kenny Albert, basically any sport that you think of, uh, Kenny, you are uh, involved with in some way. Uh, we are talking hockey, specifically Rangers and Devils, that series starting uh, on Tuesday. And it seems like we're having a reverse conversation of the Rangers and Pittsburgh series of last year. You know, the Rangers came in, not playoff experience. The Penguins, you know, obviously Crosby and all that uh, experience in the playoffs. How do the Rangers uh, build off of last year in that that run to the conference final in this series against the Devils? Well, Steve, it should be a terrific series. I was at Ranger practice earlier today, and Gerard Gallant, when he met with the media, he said it's it's two evenly matched teams. He said our team, we feel like uh, we can win the cup, but there's a team just as good on the other side as well. So uh, they finished separated by five points in the regular season. They had some terrific matchups during the season series, so it should be a lot of fun and great for the fans in the in the New York metropolitan area to have two teams playing against each other in the first round and the Islanders in the playoffs as well. It just raises the excitement level and the focus on hockey here in the New York area. And I guess for the, from a devil's perspective, their lack of playoff experience didn't hurt the Rangers last year. Uh, do you think it, it possibly comes to a head at some point in, in this series? Maybe early in the series, but I think that goes away pretty quick once they start playing the games uh, the Devils do have some players uh, with playoff experience. Andre Palats won a couple of cups in Tampa Bay. Some other players have uh, played in 20, 30, 40 playoff games. But then there are seven or eight players on the Devils that have never played in a Stanley Cup playoff game. On the Rangers side, you have the most of the team uh, who advanced to the conference final last year. Patrick Kane comes in having won three Stanley Cups. Tarasenko won a Stanley Cup in St. Louis. So... The Rangers definitely have the edge as far as playoff experience. The Devils goaltender, uh, Vitek Vanacek, he's only played in three playoff games in his career as well. So we'll see if that's a factor early on. And you take a look at the regular season matchup between these uh, these two teams. It seemed like the Devils were uh, always one step ahead of the Rangers. They were the best rush team in the, in the NHL this year. How, how do the Rangers slow down or do they even try and slow down uh, the Devils' rushing attack? Well, they certainly are a young, fast team, and we saw that during the regular season matchups. But two of those games went to overtime, and the last game was 2-1. So even though the Devils had the 3-0-1 record and the Rangers were 1-2-1, and uh, three of those games really could have gone either way. So as far as slowing them down, you know, we'll see what the matchups are. The Devils are the home team over the first two games. I think the Rangers feel that uh, either of their top two pairings can play against the Devils' top line, so I don't think that's an issue, and and the Devils probably feel the same way as far as matchups with the Rangers. And you mentioned Vanacek not playing a ton of, of playoff games, Shesterkin, obviously, last year, and I guess you could say in the bubble as well. Would you say those two are probably the most important players in the series? If not, is there anybody else? Well, in the playoffs, Steve, it always seems to come down to a couple of things, and goaltending's right at the top of the list, so uh, we saw Shesterkin last year after a couple of rough outings in Pittsburgh in games three and four really pick up his game, and, and he was one of the main reasons why the Rangers wound up beating the Penguins and then beating Carolina in round two and having the success they did early against Tampa Bay. So Banachek had a terrific regular season as well. He became the first Devil goaltender other than Brodeur to win 30 games. So uh, he's had the best season of his career. We'll see how it all plays out. But goaltending um, – injuries, a little bit of luck, certainly all come into play during a playoff series. I, I guess in this series as well, uh, if you could, you know, how long do you think this series goes? And, you know, if you had to pick right now a, a winner? Yeah, I never make predictions uh, because, first of all, I'm usually wrong. And if I knew who was going to win, they wouldn't have to play the game. So I'll, I'll stay away from that one. Gotcha. Do you think this, you know, obviously – it's hard to predict, you know, sweeps and all that stuff. Do you think this this series could go the distance? I think it certainly could. Uh, I could I could see it going six or seven games for sure. Um, you know, a lot a lot has to do with as we mentioned earlier, goaltending, matchups, a little bit of, of puck luck. I think it's going to be a great atmosphere. You know, in New Jersey, there always seems to be about thirty or forty percent Ranger fans, and over the last couple of years, there have been more. Uh, devil fans i feel in in msg for the games as well so from that standpoint it's going to be a lot of fun 
Obviously, the Boston Bruins had the uh, most historic se regular season in, in NHL history. How well do you think, you know, this is obviously looking down the line, but, you know, both of these teams, the Rangers and the Devils, uh, could fare if they ever, if they get matched up with Boston down the road? Well, you know, the unfortunate thing when you look at all these series, whether it's Rangers, Devils, Toronto, Tampa Bay, uh, Boston, Florida, Carolina Islanders, there are going to be some pretty disappointed teams and fan bases that lose in the first round that feel that they they're as good uh, they have as good a chance as anybody to win the cup, right? Whoever loses the Lightning Tampa Bay series could just as easily win the cup. You could say the same thing about the Ranger Devil series. As far as Boston, they had a tremendous regular season, setting all kinds of records, uh, all-time NHL record for wins. But that President's Trophy winner hasn't won the Cup since 2013. It's amazing. And over the last six or seven years, the President's Trophy winner hasn't even gotten out of the second round. I think the last team to do it was the Rangers in 2015 when they lost to Tampa Bay. So since then, it's been a rough go for the regular season champs. I know the Bruins have some players under the weather heading into game one against Florida. So it's a new season. Everybody starts at, at zero wins. We'll see what happens. Uh, they certainly are the favorites uh, to win the Stanley Cup at this point, but a lot can happen between now and mid-June. And obviously it looked like at the trade deadline, the Rangers went out to acquire not only star talent, but also guys that have, you know, won the Cup. They know what it takes to win, and especially Patrick Kane and uh, Vladimir Tarasenko. Just what are your expectations for those two guys, you know, for the first time in their careers playing playoffs, uh, not only on a mid-team, but in a new conference as well? Well, these are guys who historically have lifted their game come playoff time, and they both played well for the Rangers following the trades. Uh, Tarasenko came over first and then Kane a couple of weeks later. But when you look at the track record, Kane and Chicago, along with Taves and Duncan Keith and Brent Seabrook, they were the core of those three Stanley Cup teams in Chicago. Tarasenko helped lead the way for the Blues in 2019. He was uh, tremendous throughout that entire postseason, scored a lot of big goals, so I think it was good that they came in early. Tarasenko, a couple of weeks prior to the deadline, came about a week before uh, so that they were able to acclimate themselves with the team, get as many games in as possible, and I think they're ready to go. They should be great additions. We saw last year with um, Andrew Kopp and Frank Petrano what they were able to add in the playoffs. But these two are, are, are you know, future Hall of Famers, uh, you know, definitely Kane and possibly Tarasenko. So, uh, they, they're both having a lot of fun, looking forward to the playoffs, and I think they'll certainly bring a lot to this uh, Ranger squad. These first-round games uh, being broadcasted, especially in this series on MSG, both teams, uh, you know, their their broadcast network is MSG. Just how important uh, is, you know, a playoff matchup like this for, for the network as well? Well, it's tremendous. Uh, you'll have the Rangers broadcast crew, the Devils broadcast crew. I'll be calling the first two games on TBS alongside Keith Jones and Jackie Redman, and those games are available in the New York area as well. So uh, there will be three different choices uh, for the fans as far as uh, on the TV side tomorrow, radio as well with with Don LeGreca and Dave Maloney, games one and two, calling games three and four with Dave. So um, MSG obviously does a tremendous job. MSG Networks produces more hockey games than any other network uh, in North America with the Rangers, the Devils, the Islanders, and the Brewers, and uh, all of the production people behind the scenes are, are network quality folks as well. So you can't go wrong. Obviously, you step you step in both the national and uh, local side of uh, broadcasting. But, you know, when you talk about the Rangers and their history, one of the more iconic calls in Rangers history is was a local call on uh, Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final in 1994. Do you think that uh, you, you could get back to local local broadcasters calling games outside of the first round or, you know, at this point, is it just a national thing? Uh, no, that probably won't happen uh, just because of how the contracts are set up. So it won't happen for the next six years for sure. Uh, the mm -hmm. national networks have uh, the second round, third round, and then the Stanley Cup final. So on the TV side, you won't see local broadcasts after the first round. Gotcha. Well, Kenny, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I know this is basically a sprint from now until June, and uh, we're just looking forward to hearing from you, hearing you on the broadcast, and especially getting the Stanley Cup this year on TBS. Well, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, appreciate you having me on, Steve, and hopefully we can do it again a couple of times during these playoffs and uh, right on through the Stanley Cup final. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you.